Unboxing and review of the Fender FSR Player Telecaster. This guitar is more expensive than the guitars I normally review, so I'm expecting a lot more from it. And I bought it from GAC, who are Guitars and Keyboard. And the correct full name for this guitar is the Fender FSR Player Telecaster with a maple neck and an aged natural body. And I bought this guitar to replace a very cheap but very good Squire Affinity that I keep to let my students use when they can't bring their own guitars. Right, let's unbox the guitar so we can take a look at it. But before I do, I'll point out that the box is a single layer box. Now most companies I've bought guitars from, especially anything over a couple of hundred quid, they've double boxed them to make sure they're safe. But this, they haven't done that. And it's got a concertina effect on one side, so I really hope the guitar's not damaged. Right, let's open the box, which is held shut by these big nasty staples. I don't like these at all. And when you remove them, make sure you keep them well away from the guitar. I'd imagine if you put your guitar down on one of these, it'd scratch it up quite badly. And inside the box, you can see a piece of cardboard which is obviously to stop the guitar from moving around inside it and what looks like the instructions we'll have a look at that in a minute and inside the box the guitar's wrapped in one of these polystyrene style bags which prevent the guitar from getting scratched all new guitars seem to be wrapped in these recently and they seem to do the job really well and the bag makes a great noise, it's just like fingernails down a blackboard. My first impressions of the guitar is it's a great colour, great finish, it's just like the picture on the website. And they've put some sort of padding between the neck pickup and the strings to prevent the pickup from getting damaged. And there's an advert there for a free trial, which you don't need because you can get free lessons forever from ebooksforguitar.com. I'm not 100% sure whether this bag is intended just to suck up humidity or if it's to protect the pickups but I'll assume it does a bit of both. The fingerboard is a nice shiny finish which I like on a fingerboard it doesn't tend to hold dirt like the satin finishes. The neck plate has got a nice F on it from the Fender logo. I'm just trying to remove the uh, plastic film so you can get a better look at it but without much success. There's bits of plastic being held in by the actual screws. I'll have to pick that off later to do it properly. Looking at the back of the body, you can see that it's a really nice rich colour and it's a really nice finish. And you could just about make out the joints because this is made out of uh, several pieces of wood. It's not a one piece body. You can also see that the strings are strung through the body, which is a plus point because the resonance is transferred more completely from the strings to the body. Right, I'll just take the rest of the protective films off now so I can have a good look at the entire guitar. I'm not having much luck with these uh, protective films today, am I? This isn't coming off very cleanly. And it's actually leaving a sticky residue as well on the pickup. It would be nice if they developed something that was more like cling film. In fact, why don't they just use a thicker version of cling film? And then it'd be way easier to get off and it wouldn't leave any sticky residue. The scratch plate is amazingly thick. I don't think I've ever seen a scratch plate so thick. But I do like this tortoiseshell finish on it. And in fact the whole guitar, I love the colour scheme. When I started looking for a guitar, I knew I wanted a player edition and originally I wanted a butterscotch with a maple neck. However, when I saw this colour scheme, I just pressed the buy now button without even thinking. I thought it was a little bit different and I liked it quite a lot and it looks really good in the flesh. It's a nice colour scheme for me, my own personal taste anyway. I've got students who still got this film on their scratch plate after a couple of years. But I understand it, if you've got pride in your new instrument, you want to protect it for as long as possible. These player series fenders are made in Mexico and not the USA. 
and this makes them about half the price or even less than half the price of an American version. However, if I'm really honest, after handling this guitar and inspecting the finish, it feels just as good as a USA Fender. And if I didn't know it was Mexican, I'd be hard pushed to tell that it was made in Mexico. Before I look at the guitar in more detail, I'll just look at what came with it. So I'll open the little bag and have a look what's in there. And in the bag is a Fender sticker, two Allen keys and a user manual. The two Allen keys they provide are a larger one to adjust the truss rod and a smaller one to adjust the height of the saddles. So both of these tools are essential for setting up the guitar. After closer inspection of what I thought was a user manual, I realised it's just the warranty, with some other information in there. Most of the booklet is actually in Spanish, and in the Spanish half it does actually provide instructions on how to set up the guitar etc. However, at the very beginning of the book it gives you some links to register the guitar online. When you go to the Fender website and register the guitar, you actually get all the documentation you need and more, so it's well worth registering it. You can see here, when you register a guitar, it gets put into a My Gear section of the website where it stores all your equipment and it actually has photographs of what you've got. And you can see here, with the Telecaster, I've got a copy of the two year warranty, a user manual and a service manual. The user manual is quite detailed and it's got quite a lot in it, from simple things like changing the strings to the correct height for the action and how to adjust the height of the pickups. The service manual is something you'll need if you ever need to repair the guitar. It's got a complete list of part numbers and it's got a complete circuit diagram as well as a lot of other information which hopefully you'll never need. Right, let's take a detailed look at the guitar. I'll start at the headstock and work my way down so I don't miss anything out. And starting at the headstock, first point out again that the top of the neck and the headstock is gloss, high gloss finish. However, when you turn over the neck, you've got a matte finish for the back and the back of the headstock. The machine heads, I think I can say with 99% certainty that these are identical to the machine heads they provided on my American Special Stratocaster because you hold them alongside each other and they really are identical. On the front of the headstock, I really don't like these butterfly string trees. I think they're just cheap and nasty. And Fender put these nasty things even on some of their most expensive guitars. So I'll probably replace that string tree with one of their better roller type. They're not that expensive to buy and you don't have to do anything to the guitar. You can usually put it straight in on the same screw. Just behind the nut you can see there's your access to the truss rod adjustment and they always line the hole which I think is really nice and it's a nice clue to the fakes because it's very rarely you find a fake who will take the time to do that work. And the nut isn't bone and it isn't plastic, it's what they call synthetic bone. So this is new to me so I'll have to see how it performs once I play the guitar. Working our way down the neck now, the back of the neck has got a skunk stripe on it, which I really like. I don't know why, because nobody sees it but yourself, but I still like it. The neck is what they call the modern C, and regarding the feel, it's very difficult to describe over YouTube. However, if you like a very slim, fast feeling neck, this is the neck for you. I really like the feel of this neck. It's narrower than the neck on my Fender Strat and it's considerably narrower than the neck on the Squire Affinity it's replacing. And obviously, I know a narrow neck isn't for everyone, so if you like a bit more heft to your neck, 
you might not like the feel of this guitar. Looking at the fretboard, the frets are beautifully finished. They're all well polished and there isn't a sharp edge in sight. And they've clearly lacquered over the top of the frets because you can see where the lacquer curls up around the bottom of the frets, which is perfect for keeping muck and grime from underneath the frets because dirt getting caught under the frets can look pretty horrid and it can be quite awkward to clean off. But it'd be nice to hear from you guys in the comments down below how you clean off that muck from around the frets because there's some really brilliant ideas that come out of these comments. Right, let's move on to the body. As you saw earlier, at the back of the body, the neck plate has an F on it to reassure you that it is a fender. And it's a nice little touch. And strangely, as insignificant as it seems, the strap button is identical to the one on my American Strat. So I'm pretty sure that most of the metalwork, or possibly all of the metalwork, comes out of the same factory as the American fenders. I'm pretty sure the scratch plate is the thickest scratch plate I've ever seen and it's a tortoise shell finish which I quite like. And the scratch plate is the iconic Telecaster shape with the pickup mounted into it. And the pickups are described as being the Fender Player Series Alnico 5 Telecaster single coil pickups. And they're exactly what you'd expect to see on a traditional Telecaster. Looking at the saddles and the bridge assembly, the chrome seems really clear and deep and there's no rough edges at all. And this is the reason I got this particular Telecaster, because all the American ones I wanted in the colour I wanted had the three saddle assembly with only three intonation adjustments. And I don't like these. I find it very difficult to get accurate intonation when you're sharing an intonation screw between two saddles, so I'd much rather have the individual intonation adjustments for each string. Moving on to the control plate, the switch for the pickups, or the pickup selector switch, is very solid and you get a really firm click between the positions. And for those of you who are new to electric guitars, what this does is it selects between the bridge pickup in the middle position it's both pickups and then through to the neck pickup so you can select which pickups you want to play on. The two knobs are for the volume and the tone and unfortunately we've come a cropper here. The tone control is absolutely shocking and when you turn it it feels like there's sand inside it and it makes a terrible noise. But I have a suspicion it's something minor and I can fix it easily. And rather than sending the guitar back, I'll actually try to do that and I'll show you what I do. And what I think is, during shipping, it's been crushed against the box and it's just pushed the knob on too far, which means the knob is rubbing against the plate. So if I'm right, just by loosening the screw and moving it out slightly, it should stop the noise. So I'll try that. And whilst I'd taken the knob off, I just checked the potentiometer a couple of times, just by turning it a little bit, and it seemed fine. I use a folded piece of paper to make sure I get the right gap between the knob and the plate. Thankfully, that's fixed it, and the control knob now turns freely and without making any noises, so I'm happy with that. But this just goes to show it wasn't packaged well enough. A single box and then a thin polystyrene bag isn't enough to protect a guitar. And personally, I'd never send a guitar through the post the way this was sent to me. And unfortunately, it didn't stop there. As you saw from the early part of this review, everything was really going well and it was a really nice guitar. However, when I tried to tune the guitar, I found that the buzz on especially the D string made the guitar unplayable. So I checked out the important parts of the guitar with a magnifying glass and I found that the nut is absolutely shocking. They've clearly tried to fix an issue because you can see where they've marked it with a pencil and you can also see some very rough tooling marks but they've not managed to fix the issue so they've still sent it out. 
So, at this point in the video, I was just supposed to play a couple of tunes and show that it sounded nice, and that was the end of the video. But unfortunately, it's not going to play out that way. So, because of this issue, I sent an email to both Fender and Gak, who I bought the guitar from, to find out who's responsible for checking it before it goes to the customer. Gak sent me the response that they would help me with the issue if I wanted to deal with them. However, they've forwarded my email to Fender and they sometimes like to deal with issues. So that's a pretty good response and pretty positive. But unfortunately, it didn't answer my questions. I then got a response from Fender. Again, that didn't answer my questions. And Fender offered to take the guitar back and first investigate it and then to send me a replacement or a repair, I assume. However, one, I don't know how long I'm going to be without the guitar. And two, I wouldn't stick this guitar back in the post the way it came to me. So I've decided not to take them up on their offer and I'll keep the guitar and I'll repair it myself. And what I'll do is make a second video on how to repair or replace the nut on a Telecaster, how to set it up and then I'll do the sound tests. For this video though, as it's an unboxing and a review, I'm going to have to close it by saying the guitar isn't a very good guitar. The woodwork's really nicely made and finished and the lacquer's really good and the metalwork seems really good. It's just those fine details that means it buzzes really badly and it doesn't play as it should. Now, if you've had a similar experience from a Mexican Fender, please leave a comment down below. However, if you've had a really good experience from a Mexican Fender, would you also leave a comment down below? Because I'd really like to know if I was just unlucky and got a bad guitar, or if Fender make a habit of this. If you want to see the concluding part of this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon, and then you'll be notified when I upload the second part. Otherwise, if you're interested in doing some free guitar courses, just go to my YouTube channel and look through the playlists and you can see the ebooks that accompany the courses at ebooksforguitar.com thank you very much for watching